as an Azure administrator, you might be having the responsibility to handle the data center with thousands of servers where you wish to quickly and easily enable scalability from a central secure location. Or you might also wish to assign them declarative configuration in order to enable compliance with the desired state as per the organizational policies. This is where Azure Automation State Configuration comes for the rescue. Hi, my name is Neeraj Kumar. I'm a cloud evangelist and architect and I will be your instructor for this course. This is the third part of the series Implement Azure Automation and this module is entitled Azure Automation State Configuration. There is a lot to cover, so let's get started. So what is Azure Automation State Configuration? Azure Automation State Configuration is a configuration management service in Azure and it allows you to create and manage desired state configuration in PowerShell for workloads. These workloads can be physical or virtual and it can be in any cloud or on-premises data center. Desired state configuration can be used for the management of a variety of machines. These can be Azure virtual machines, it can be physical or virtual as I already told you, it can be a Windows machines on premises or in cloud or other than Azure. It includes the AWS EC2 instances as well. Physical or virtual Linux machines as well on premises in Azure or in a cloud other than Azure. I will be using the term DSC interchangeably throughout this session for the state configuration. The DSC can be configured in the Azure portal by selecting state configuration DSC under configuration management. In case of organization dependencies or policies, you do not wish to manage the state configuration in cloud, you can use Azure Automation State Configuration as a report only endpoint. You can then use Azure Automation State Configuration to check and report compliance reports. This feature allows you to set or push the configurations through DSC and view the reporting details in Azure Automation. Managing Azure VMs with Azure Automation State Configuration is included at no extra charge. If the installed desired state configuration extension version on the Azure VMs is greater than 2.70. You can follow the link on the screen to get more details on the pricing for Azure Automation Desired State Configuration. Now that we understand what Azure Automation State Configuration is, let's try to understand the benefits of using it over the state configuration outside of Azure. So the first benefit is that it enables the management of machines from a central location. This includes managing scalability, assign declarative configurations, and view and avoid compliance issues by reporting any deviations to the desired state configuration. The second one is built-in pull server. Azure Automation State Configuration provides a DSC, that is a desired state configuration pull server and the target nodes will be able to receive the configurations and report its compliance status confirming to their current state, which may or may not be a deviation from the desired state. The built-in pull server therefore helps in the sense that we do not need to create our own pull server and we can target many different types of machines as we discussed in the previous slide. The third one is the management of DSC artifacts. The desired state configuration or the DSC are basically artifacts of Azure Automation State Configurations, which can be managed from within Azure portal or from PowerShell. You can use either way to manage the configuration for resources and target nodes. We then have import reporting data into Azure Monitor Logs. That is another benefit of Azure Automation State Configuration. The reporting data from the target nodes that are managed by the Azure Automation DSC are sent to the built-in pull server that we had discussed some time back. From the pull server, the report can be forwarded to the Log Analytics workspace for detailed analysis of the report.
Before we jump onto the demo, let us try to understand how the Azure Automation State Configuration works. So Azure Automation State Configuration is done using the new capability built into PowerShell with version 4. There are many providers that are baked into PowerShell for the ease of configuration management using PowerShell. These providers are around file systems, registry, roles and features, processes, services, packages, logs, scripts and so on and so forth. These resource providers are being updated frequently. One of the key points is that Azure Automation State Configuration is a declarative technology and not imperative, meaning that we only let the configuration know what we want and not how to do it. Therefore, the focus is on the desired state and not on the code on how to do it. So how is the declarative configuration done? For the DSC to work, we need to author the PowerShell DSC. We need to create the configuration file. After the file has been created, we need to compile the file in MOV format, which is the Microsoft object format. Once the file has been compiled, we need to have the MOV file staged for the target nodes, where we want the DSC to make the nodes compliant. It is then the Windows management instrumentation that takes care of the implementation of the configuration. A brief sample is provided on the right hand side, which shows how the PowerShell DSC files are written. Here we have the name configuration and then webconfig. We are giving it a name as webconfig and then we have the nodes. They can be multiple nodes. So these nodes are nothing but servers or the machines, target nodes or the servers. So node webvm1 and what feature do we want? We want the Windows feature of IIS. For the feature to be present, we need to write ensure is equal to present. In case we have ensure is equal to absent, then the feature is removed. The name is web server and include all sub features is true. So that is self explanatory and I hope you are able to understand this. It will be more clear when we are doing the demo. We were just discussing about the staging of the DSC files for the target nodes, right? And there are two modes to accomplish the same. One of them is the push mode. In this mode, the configurations are applied to the node via the start DSC configuration command. The second mode is the pull mode, where the configurations are stored centrally. There is a special service, which is the DSC service that runs on Windows Server 2012 R2 and above. That has the DSC configuration. The target nodes, pull and pull the configuration with their unique IDs. They have GUIDs actually from the servers running the DSC service. Now that we have discussed about the configuration modes, let me tell you that we can use PowerShell DSC in Azure, which makes it very, very powerful. It can be used during VM provisioning. It uses the VM extension to trigger for a running VM. And that is what we are going to use in our demo. On to the demo. So we are here on my Azure portal and you can see we have the automation account by the name of ATCSL automation and then we have web server IIS which is the virtual machine. The ATCSL is the resource group and then we have a virtual network by the name of ATCSL VNet. So this VNet is a very very basic configuration and so is the the web server IIS which is the virtual machine and it's very basic and then we have the ATCSL automation account and before going to the automation account let's see what web server IIS is in detail. So here we are on our virtual machine where we have the public IP address and the private IP address and uh, if we go to extensions we'll just type in extensions and click on it. We see that here we do not have any extensions as such so we do not have anything installed. So we'll click on cross and go back. And uh, what we will do is we'll try to connect to this and uh, see what configuration it has. So we'll click on connect and click on RDP. Once we have the RDP open, we'll see the port number and the public IP address. We can click on the download RDP file. We will download it on our desktop. We'll click on save. So we have this open. We'll click on connect. And uh, once we connect to it, 
it will ask for the user ID and password. The user ID is ATCSL admin as you can see and I'll give the password. We will click on yes and wait for the system to be connected. So here we have our virtual machine connected. And if you can see here, we do not have the IAS installed. We do not have any other roles and features. What we can also do to confirm this is we can click on add roles and features and then click on next, next, next. And then see that if you scroll down, the web server IIS is not ticked. That is, the web server is not installed. So that is a confirmation. We'll click on cancel. We'll do it with the desired state configuration. We will minimize this, come back to our Azure portal. And now what we will do is, we'll go back to home and then click on automation accounts. Here we have a very basic ATCSL automation automation account setup in the East US2 location. So we'll click on it. We covered the modules on the PowerShell runbooks and the update management in my previous videos. And now it's time for the state configuration. So we'll click on the state configuration DSC. And once we're there, you will notice that under nodes, there is nothing. So what we are going to do first is go to configuration and then click on add. From here, you can select the file icon because it is asking for a configuration file. I have the IAS.ps1 setup which is the one that we downloaded from the gist and we'll click on it and click on open. It is asking me for the name. For the name, we are going to use the same name which we had given alongside configuration. So if you go back to my gist here, you will notice that I had mentioned configuration web server and that is the name that we are going to use. So I'll go back to the issue portal and if you see here, web server is the one that I'm using for the name. For the description, it is not needed. So we'll click on okay and wait for the configuration to be uploaded. Okay, now that we see under configuration, the web server has been uploaded and the next step is to compile this configuration into a MOF file. Now what we are going to do is click on the web server and compile this PowerShell script into a MOF file. So we'll click on compile and click on yes. So the compilation job has been succeeded. So here we see that the status is showing as a starting, but I think the job already has been completed. So what we can do is we can click on this status and we'll see that the status shows as completed. So this is done and we'll go back to web server and it's still showing as starting that that's fine. We'll click on ADCSL automation and here we have the web server compile configuration count as zero. So after a while you will see one under the compile configuration count. That is one server has been detected. We can click on the web server. We will see that the status shows as completed. So that is fine. We'll go back to ADCSL automation. And if we click on compile configuration, here it shows web server dot web server IIS. This is the name of the web server, which is the web server IIS and web server actually is the name of the configuration. So we have this node, which is just one node uh, by the name of web server IIS. So this is done. And what we are going to do is associate this node with the PowerShell DSC. So what we'll do is we'll go to nodes and then click on add. Here we have web server IIS. That is the virtual machine that we were talking about. We'll click on it. And here it shows as VM status as running. Operating system is Windows, status as not connected. So we'll click on connect and then node configuration name. We'll click on the drop down and select the name, which is web server dot web server IIS. If you remember, this was the name that was being shown under the compiled configuration. So we'll select that. The refresh frequency shows as 30, which is the amount of time in minutes when the PowerShell DS local configuration manager goes to the pull server to see and check and download the latest node configuration. And then we have the configuration mode frequency. This is again the time in minutes at which the background application of DSC attempts to implement the current node configuration on the target node, which is the web server IIS. Then we have a configuration mode as apply and monitor. We have apply and monitor, apply only and apply and autocorrect. So what we'll choose here is apply and autocorrect. So if there is a mismatch, if there is uh, a deviation and something has been changed in terms of roles, like uh, the web server has been removed, it will autocorrect it. And the action after reboot 
is continue configuration we'll leave it as it is the other one is a stop configuration we'll, we are not going to stop the configuration rather continue configuration and then finally click on ok so it will take a couple of minutes before it connects this uh, web server IIS with the PowerShell DSC and so by the time this is happening what we can do is we can go back to the virtual machines and see what's there so we'll click on virtual machines and here we have one of the machines that we were working on web server IIS we'll click on it and then look for extensions we will now see that microsoft.powershell.dsc has been provisioned and the status shows as provisioning succeeded so we can click on it and you will see that the version is 2.83.1.0 and the status shows as provisioning succeeded and we can view the detailed status from here but we're not going to do that for now we will go back to virtual machines so what we are going to do is connect to the server and see whether the IIS has been installed or not so I already have the virtual machine open with me so I'll click on the virtual machine here the web server role has been installed and it appears on the left hand side as well so we are good with the desired state configuration so that is it about the demo on the PowerShell desired state configuration using Azure Automation. Now let me give you a homework for the desired state configuration. Try to configure the default file for the default website within the IIS using the PowerShell desired state configuration. In order to test the state configuration using Azure Automation, what you can also do is go to the virtual machine and remove the role of web server from that system and then see whether the desired state configuration kicks off and patches that fault or not. So that can also be a homework for you. We are finally at the end of this module and what we covered today, we tried to understand what is Azure Automation DSC and then we went through the benefits of Azure Automation state configuration. We also covered how the Azure Automation desired state configuration works with the push and the pull modes. And finally, we had the demo on the PowerShell desired state configuration using the Azure portal. I hope you liked the session and if you do, please do subscribe to my channel and you can download the training material from azuretraining.com. You can follow me on Twitter at the rate MS Tech Trainings and also on LinkedIn. And until we meet next time, keep assuring.